Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing on these uh, little Chinese diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is: Will these diesel air heaters run on kerosene? Well, the short answer is yes, and they will run very well on kerosene. However, there is a but, and I'll get back to the uh, the but a little later. So currently, I'm running this on what we would call in Australia a lighting kerosene so kerosene that um, you would use in um, kerosene lamps kerosene stoves um, kerosene heaters inside the home now the kerosene and the diesel are very interchangeable and there's a lot of different grades of kerosene You've got, I suppose, at the top of the range, you would have um, rocket fuel, then you would have aviation kerosene, and then you have the different domestic grades. Uh, in America, I think you call it um, 1K and 2K, and I think in Britain, they call it uh, C1 and C2. So the basic difference is, is uh, there 1K or, or uh, C1 would be what we'd probably call lighting kerosene here. The other kerosene is more a domestic kerosene with probably a higher sulfur content. Oh, well, I know that uh, in America the, the uh, 2K has a si higher sulfur content. But anyway, in many cases the, the diesel and the kerosene are interchangeable. And I remember one case, um, oh, quite a few years ago now, when a sailing friend of mine had a bad boating accident on a, a small island and reef out in the Coral Sea. The rescue helico helicopter came out and it was right at the limit of its endurance. So while the medicos were attending to my friend, the crew filled up the tanks on marine diesel. So they just put the marine diesel on top of the, uh, the kerosene and that gave them the endurance then to get back to, uh, to, get back to the Australian coastline. So, Ebus Batcher, um, recommends that particularly in winter time that you actually do mix 50 50 kero with your diesel when you're running one of these heaters to stop the waxing and the gelling of the diesel in winter time it's also can be a good idea to use the the uh, kerosene occasionally for a cleaning purpose so if you run the the kero through the lines remember these are very tiny fuel lines and if you get waxing and gelling from the diesel, particularly if you've got a bit of biodiesel in it, the caro will clean out the line. But apart from that, there's very little difference. It still puts out the same cavitation little bubbles that the diesel does, which is quite normal. The, the figures I do on the test, on the bench test, are very similar to what they, they come up as a, um, a diesel test. So the figures from a Kero test on this heater, almost identical to the ones on a, um, um, a diesel test. Now there are differences because you, you're running at um, always a different um, atmospheric temperature and you've got different pressures. Now we're, we're running, I'm doing these tests in a, in a summertime and I'm running pretty close to the limit. I can't really run these heaters up at, at uh, full power for too long because the the inlet temperature is too high the maximum inlet temperature for these heaters is 40 degrees c and uh, after that you will have overheating problems because the the increase in temperature in here is too great for the the ecu to control but basically the kero runs really well and they'll help clean the heater They'll even help clean, if you run a, do a Kero run, it'll help clean some of the soot out it, that you might have got over the, uh, the winter time. However, now we come to the butt. And <laughs> the butt is this. The butt is the metering pump. And the lubricity of the kerosene and the type of kerosene that you're using. Now, I know a lot of people in England and Europe use kerosene in these rather than diesel. Why I'm not so sure because um, perhaps they can buy it cheaper than diesel but in, in Australia the Kero is much more expensive than diesel. But back to the heater, the, uh, the little pump here. 
in here you've got a a little piston inside a metal cylinder and the piston flies up and down and shoots the fluid out the top here now there's no there's no separate lubrication oil lubrication like you have in a motor car engine the little piston here uses the diesel for both lubrication and and the sealing against the um, uh, leakage now lighting kerosene or, or normal domestic kerosene has a much lower lubricity than the diesel and you will get wear by running the piston up and down now oh probably i don't know maybe 12 15 years ago i had a project and i was using one of these little dosing pumps and i was sucking kerosene up about um i don't know maybe a bit over a meter maybe 1200 and uh <laughs> my, my friends had come to have a look at the uh the little test anyway after not a considerable amount of time I, I think maybe a couple of days the wear caused by the the lack of lubrication in the in the the lighting kerosene wrecked the little pump and it would no longer suck up the diesel now sorry no longer suck up the kerosene now when i put the the pump down at the bottom of the tank the kerosene tank it would work in a fashion but now it would never work properly again and the dose rate was all wrong so yes kerosene will work extremely well in these but you need to look at what the lubrication factor of the kero that you're using if you're using like in america you use the uh the one uh, the 2k or, or in britain probably the c2 it has a, a higher sulfur content and the sulfur will give you some lubrication on the piston here otherwise you really probably might need to put in some lubricant maybe a, a diesel kero mix but if you run this little heater on what we call lighting kerosene, I can guarantee you that within a matter of a number of days of running, that this this piston pump will now longer suck up the, uh, suck up the kero. <laughs> We're going to have to feed these birds. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, just recapping. These diesel air heaters will run very well on kerosene. However, if you're running a lighting sort type of kerosene, then you will have problems with the lubricity in the little um, metering pump. Now, if this was a sort of a diaphragm pump, there wouldn't be an issue. But because it's a metal piston, inside a metal cylinder, and you've got metal on metal wear, and it uses lubrication of the, the, uh, the diesel to give it, to prevent wear, Running pure lighting kerosene will create wear and will create problems in your pump. Okay, well, I hope that helps and um, thanks for watching.